I'm Sarah and I have family members in active addiction. Growing up, I didn't really know what was going on. My dad either he'd like sweep in and be like a superhero and like save the day or not really there. He would be in his shed. And at the time, I didn't really understand. I just thought, you know, my dad's a little weird. And I can see now like how much stress that would put on my mom because it always left her to be like the bad guy and be like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> That's irresponsible. My parents got in this huge fight and they were in their room and they were trying to be quiet because they didn't want us to hear. And she said something about my dad being on drugs. I was like, well, that, that can't be right. That's my dad. I got up the courage to ask her a couple days later and she looked at me and she said, no. I could see on her face that there was like more there. I asked her, well, if he was, would you tell me? And she said, no. <laughs> so that was kind of my first realization that there was something a little bit more there. He would be there to do like the really fun things and do that, but he wasn't really there like on a day to day. He was a mechanic, so he worked long hours and then he would come home and he would go in his shed. He had um, like a woodworking shed in the backyard that he did like hobbies and stuff. We weren't allowed in there. He would be in there until he came in to go to sleep, so we didn't really ever see him. He was really distant. He was doing cocaine, and then after the divorce is when he started using that. It was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, because either he was the amazing dad that spent five or six hours helping me with my woodshop project, or he was a complete jerk. If you disagreed with him, you were calling him a liar. It was either for my 12th or my 13th birthday. Um, we rented a cabin in Big Bear. So we went up there during the day and he was going to come up at night. He didn't show up when he was supposed to. Um, we waited and we waited and we waited in the cabin and me and my sister were really, we, we were scared. We thought something happened. It was before everybody had cell phones so we couldn't call him to find out where he was. I'm not exactly sure what time he got there but it was way after me and my sister went to sleep. And I remember my mom was trying really, really hard to not fight with him. Cause it was my birthday weekend. It was supposed to be like a good fun time. He was snippy and rude and mean. And I remember um, we went tubing. He didn't come tubing with us. And when we went back to the cabin, he was gone. I wasn't really sad until we got back to the house and he wasn't there either. And um, that was the weekend that they split up. Pretty much completely disappeared from my life for a while. When I was in college, he got arrested for domestic abuse with the woman that he was living with at the time. To this day, he swears that he didn't do it, that she just, it was a really bad fight and she's crazy and she called the cops. But he pled out, so he went to jail. He got clean in jail, so that was a positive. Yeah, he would call me and we would talk and he swore that, you know, he was done with drugs now. And as long as he was clean, I would work on having a relationship with him. Because when he was when he was sober, he was he wasn't a bad guy. He was you know he was a good guy. He was a good dad. Three or four months after he got out, he was the victim all over again, and everything was everybody else's fault. My dad is in his 60s. Right now, he's saying that he wants help. I just hope that we can actually get him in somewhere and that he can stick with it this time. Because I really. I'd like to have my dad back. Growing up, I didn't really know my brother was using. I knew that he smoked pot every now and then. He was really distant too, kind of like my dad. Because of that, I guess I didn't really know that there was anything odd about that. I remember I always wanted to hang out with him and he never ever wanted to hang out with me. <laughs> and I thought it was a problem with me. I thought I wasn't cool enough to hang out with my big brother. They kicked him out when he was 17, so I was about eight or nine. He was stealing our computers, our laptops, stuff like that to get high. A drug dealer came to the door and my mom answered the door and they threatened her. We didn't understand. I didn't know that's why he was getting kicked out. I just knew that they were kicking him out. So I was really mad at her because she was making my big brother leave. He moved back in after my parents split up to help. And that's kind of when I learned more of the story. Uh, he, had a he had a bunch of friends over one night and they were all sitting around talking and finally let me hang out with him, so I was super excited. He started talking about how they used to do coke with my dad. I didn't say anything because I didn't want to, you know, tell on him to my mom or anything like that. He had started using Oxycontin. He was basically playing with, with an overdose because he was taking so much. 
and that worried him so he went to my mom and he decided he wanted to get help. After the oxy he had moved on to using heroin. They have to take the court, the people who are court ordered detox before they can take any other so he had to wait like one and a half almost two months before even getting into detox and um, we were worried that he would not want to go by the time they had a spot for him. But he did and he went and now he's been clean for like six and a half, seven months. When he got out of rehab is when he had told my mom that the first time he used was with my dad. She was devastated. She didn't know that that's how it happened and she kicked him out for it. And it had all started with my dad. What's nice though is that my brother doesn't necessarily blame my dad even though that's where it started. Um, he's working the steps and he's in the program so he, he understands that he has to be accountable as well. Him being clean is, is amazing. When he got out of rehab, he just came over and he gave me a hug and he started crying and he apologized to me for everything. That was really powerful. That was like a really good start into rebuilding. He's awesome to have around. We can rely on him now. Um, I can call him on the phone and I know that he's gonna answer as long as he's not at work, which he wouldn't. He missed my graduation for my associate's degree. He was in Vegas partying for the weekend and at that moment to him, that was more important than being there but I'm about to graduate with my bachelor's and he is going to be here. So that, that's amazing. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just, it's great that he's gonna be able to be there and participate in that and be sober and be present. My hope is that my dad or anybody else who's struggling with addiction right now can look at the success that other people have had, like for my dad, look at my brother. Um, he's clean now, he's doing a wonderful job, and it's, it's possible. And for the family, because it, it hurts the family a lot as well, um, just to, to hang in there and don't, don't give up. Keep an open mind, keep an open heart, and when they are ready for help, if they come to you, be willing to help. Um, if they come to you after they've already, they're already in recovery, keep an open heart to letting them back in because it's a lot of work, but it's worth it to see them sober or clean.